Gene Dinkins. I'd also like to introduce staff, the uh, um, zoning administrator, Rachel Bailey, and Hannah Slice, associate planner. We're also assisted by Andrea Wolf, the land use board coordinator. The board is charged with hearing applications for special exceptions, variances, and administrative appeals. All testimony is recorded for the record and anyone wishing to speak will need to be sworn and must come up to the podium to speak. No testimony will be taken from the floor. When you come up to the podium, please state your name and please speak clearly into the microphone because the meeting is being recorded. For those of you who plan to speak, you must be sworn. So if you're here as an applicant or here to speak on any of these cases, please stand up at this time and raise your right hand. Do you affirm or attest that the testimony you will give today is the truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Now I'll turn the, uh, the meeting over to uh, Rachel. Good morning. So first I would like to go over the meeting format. Applicants with requests before the board are allotted a presentation time of 10 minutes. This time should include, but is not limited to, an overview of the project, case history, and any pertinent meetings held regarding the request. This time also includes all persons presenting information on behalf of the applicant. Any member of the public may address the board in intervals of three minutes or five minutes if acting as a spokesperson for an established body or group of three or more. The applicant then has time for rebuttal. So the board reserves the right to amend these procedures on a case-by-case -case basis, and we will be using timers this morning. So first on the agenda is the consent agenda. So the board uses the consent agenda to approve non-controversial or routine matters by a single motion and vote. If a member of the board or the public wants to discuss an item on the agenda, that item is removed and considered during the regular agenda. The board then approves the remaining consent agenda items. So the first matter on the consent agenda this morning is to approve the March 13th, 2018 minutes. So item number three on the agenda, 1108 Barnwell Street, Utility A. That's a special exception to establish a wireless communication facility, a cell node, on a utility pole in a residential district. Item number four, 2018-0021. This is 2231 Lady Street, Utility A. This is another special exception for a cell node. Item number five, 2018-0026, 1701 Pendleton Street, a variance to the side yard setback requirement. And item number six, 2018-0027, this is for 104, 112, 116, 120, and 124 River Ridge Road, variance to the side yard setbacks. Uh, is anyone here uh, on any of those properties would like to have those taken off the consent agenda, please uh, come up to the podium now, raise your hand, and let us know. Um, I see no one that ob objects to keeping the, any, uh, not keeping those on the consent agenda, so I'll uh, entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda, um, subject to all uh, conditions um, that, that were in the staff comments. Um, there you go. A second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Consent agenda is carried. Um, this next item, I'm going to have to recuse myself. Um, our company is involved in this uh, uh, property, um, so I will be stepping down and uh, Mr. McMeekin will be taking over. Thank you. All right. First item on the regular agenda, item number seven, case 2018-0013. This is 3006 Divine Street. It's a variance to the off-street parking requirement for a proposed restaurant use. The applicant is here and is welcome to come forward and speak. Thank you. Thank you all for hearing us. Um, my name is Frank Kaysen. I'm with Kaysen Development Group. We are the owners of a building at 3006 Divine Street. Bought it about six to eight months ago. Um, with the idea of repurposing the building, we, we felt like the uh, highest and best use of the building was uh, a retail uh, use. So um, we've been working to find 
someone to uh, come into this space. We've talked with a number of different folks just for some degree of background um, all around the, the city as well as uh, outside of the city, uh, around the state and outside of the state. Um, we found uh, the one um, tenant that we were the most interested in, we felt like it was the best fit for the building and the area, uh, was a tenant by the name of Backstreets. Um, this is a restaurant out of Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, it's as family owned and operated as you can get. We, we went and personally visited the restaurant ourselves in, in Hickory and walked in and mom, dad, brothers, sisters, everybody's, everybody's there working in the kitchen and the, um, the front of the house, etc. cetera. So uh, they've been in business for um, almost 23 years, I think. And this will be their first, uh, their first location outside of Hickory. Uh, they have a son who will um, run and operate this location. His name's Casey, and Casey's here today, and, um, and able and willing to speak, if you guys would like. He um, went to USC, so that was how they were familiar with the area and the market, as, as well as Divine Street. Um, so just a couple of things, because I think there's been some misinformation, as, as, as can happen with these projects, that has been put out there. Um, they are a restaurant. Um, I think they'd be okay with me saying that they, you know, 20 something years ago, restaurants named themselves Bar and Grill, and now that's not really very common. So this restaurant will be called Backstreets, not, not, back, not Backstreets Bar and Grill, just Backstreets. Uh, they do have a bar. Probably the most comparable restaurant that I have to, to compare it to is um, Harper's, or formal, you know, was formerly Harper's, which you guys are somewhat familiar with, um, and that they are a attempting to appeal to a wide range of, um, of age groups, and, um, and they have a, a big menu with uh, a number of different items on it. So um, it is family friendly, that is their core, that is their focus. Um, they, um, that, that should be evidenced by the fact that a number of people have asked them why they have not looked at the Harper's building. Um, I know there's been hot topics somewhat recently, and their reasoning was they don't want to be in Five Points because this is a more of a family-friendly area. Um, so to me, that speaks to who they are, um, who they are, and who they are trying to be uh, in this market as well. Um, they, uh, oddly enough, in uh, Hickory share a parking lot also with a church. I, th I think y'all provided with a letter from that church that. Um, with a strong recommendation of support for them, um, as well as a number of different community members. Um, I think the sheriff of Hickory maybe wrote a letter to some folks like that. So they're, they're very well respected, not just community members, but a restaurant in Hickory. Um, I think their track record speaks for itself. Um, a number of people have asked about uh, things like closing hours and a lot of concern. I think we've been roped into a lot of the, the concerns about five points and late openings, and uh, late closings rather. Um, and that is not their intent at all here, that uh, a number of people have addressed the fact that in Hickory they are open until 2 a.m. and that is not um, what they're going to do here. Um, they are, their plans are to close at 11 here, so the, um, they have no desire or plans to open past uh, to, to a 2 a.m. closing time, which they do in Hickory, but that's not the... It's not the case here. So um, we have, uh, the building currently has 18 parking spaces on site. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, currently an office building, Remax, as I said. Uh, to the left on this slide is, um, is Urban Cookhouse, and then uh, to the right is Sadler Insurance uh, Agency. So our variance request is for a reduction of parking The required number of spaces is eight spaces per thousand square feet. We have four spaces per thousand on site right now. Um, although I know that count that um, you all are not able to make decisions based on what else is on Divine Street. We did do a, a study of our our own. It's not a it wasn't a formal parking study, but we looked at other restaurants on Divine Street. The average today um, that we that we found was about 4.4 .4 spaces per thousand. So we're right under that average. Um, 
We have more gross parking spaces at 18 than any other restaurant on the Vine Street with the exception of uh, Urban Cookhouse directly next to us. Um, and, um, but we, we also, we were concerned ourselves uh, as well as the restaurant about parking from day one. Uh, wanted to make sure that we had enough to accommodate uh, uh, the restaurant and the neighborhood, what we knew would be neighborhood concerns about overflow parking. So uh, we do have, we have secured three different um, locations for off-site parking that um, two of which are immediately adjacent to the site. One to the right behind Sadler uh, Insurance Office, one to the left behind uh, an acupuncturist, and one, one, block, <coughs> one block down the street uh, behind Riverside Church. Um, so all together, that, that was 10 spaces to the right, nine to the left, and 12 uh, behind Riverside Church. So that is, uh, it's a total of 49 parking spaces, which is way more than anyone on Divine Street has access to that we're aware of. Um, and it puts us at about 10 parking spaces per thousand square feet, if you include um, all those spaces. Um, I think there were renderings of the building. The plan for the building is to put, use the existing footprint of the building, <coughs> that and that alone. Uh, we were, will push back the front to have outdoor open seating uh, that will be covered but, uh, but outside. And um, any other questions that you all have for me or the uh, owners of the restaurant? Or here? Frank, let me ask you a couple of questions. So. The hours of operation will be from when to when? I better turn to for the morning, uh, 11. Do you want to come up to the podium just so yeah. you can, thank you. So we currently, uh, Monday through Friday, open at 11 a.m. Um, again, it, it will be different here, our closing hours. Um, and on weekends, we open at 11.30 a.m. Um, and like you said, we're shooting to serve up until 11 o'clock. 11 p.m. PM. What um, my assumption is, is that DOR has authority and would be involved in this, but given some different cases and what's going on in the city, so y'all are gonna provide, I think, enough food to, um, that, that, that's not gonna come into question. There, there's been some questions with some different um, businesses in different parts of the city that aren't currently meeting that requirement. My assumption is it's with y'all being a, basically a restaurant or, or I looked on your website and I see liquor on one slide, but it's, it's, it's a restaurant, but that's not gonna be an issue is meeting that requirement that the, the DOR mandates. Uh, no, sir, in, uh, in Hickory, we are over 70% of our sales come from food. So okay. don't see any issue with meeting those Y'all have copies of the leases. Um, what, what, what is the term of the lease, if you don't mind me asking, Frank, between you and Backstreet's? Seven years. Seven years. Y'all have leases that you can provide us with with these different off-site places that y'all are making arrangements for? And again, so if you're, if you're talking about 49 in total, and, and, and the request is to reduce the 18 to 9. I just want to make sure my math works. So it's 40 other spaces that are... 30 other spaces. 30. 30 okay. Where did the 49 come from? For, well, that's with what we have on site currently. Okay, that, uh, okay. gotcha. We, um, we can provide um, confirmation from all three owners that we have leases in place with each of them. You have that with you today? Yep. Okay. Um, you've got, what are the, those leases, what are the terms of those leases, the time parameter of those? I have to be honest, we're advised not to share the specific terms of those leases. Um, none of them are the full seven years, and that was for everyone's um, risk factor with that. Um, they're already tied to a pricey long-term lease, um, and we're hoping for the best 
and making uh, provisions for the best, meaning best case scenario, the restaurant does really well and we need all that parking. Um, but worst case, they, worst case, they go out of business, of course. Second worst, they, they, they don't do as well as, as we hoped and don't need all of that parking, which that parking that we just mentioned was over and beyond what um, I guess the concern, the concern can be is if, um, and, and you're going along where I'm thinking, so in the first 12, 24 months, the restaurant doesn't perform as everybody hopes, um, and it's a 12-month lease, um, then what we've given you permission to do, you know, with the reduction in parking, how do we ensure that that that, that because I, th I think that, that that's what a lot of people have got concerns about is where does that come after you open? So what happens in 12 months, you know, 12 months in a day and the restaurant's not hitting its numbers or you are hitting your numbers, um, where's the teeth that, that, that people are gonna hopefully have some, some comfort level with um, that, there's going to be ample parking. We can, we can provide evidence from the owners that we have leases in place. Um, I can tell you they all have automatic renewals in them as well. Um, but we, or can we sit here and guarantee uh, 49 spaces for seven years? I, I, can't, I can't promise you that. Um, okay. The hope is that we need those spaces, and that means that it's a good restaurant that, that hopefully will and I guess again uh, just kind of my thought pattern um, you do well after the first 12 months and you need those spaces but the lease expires you don't have to renew them so there's a need for the spaces but there's no requirement to maintain them see where I'm going yeah totally I mean the, the again I'll go back to what I said to start with Need for spaces is as much as, as maybe more important to the restaurant as it right. is to, to residents because <clears throat> we don't have parking and people want to come, they will not come. Right. Um, and one of the first things he said to us, we talked about lunch traffic, and, and Casey said, honestly, lunch traffic is dictated largely by the parking, the amount of parking you have because if you don't have the parking, they go somewhere else. Right. Um, so the need for spaces is. <laughs> critical to the, the restaurant as well. So I, I can assure you that is not something that if they're doing really well and need all the spaces, they're not gonna right. um, back, out of those, back out of those leases. But at the same time, they have to have some flexibility if things don't go perfectly as well. Right. Um, and, and I think uh, Calhoun, Calhoun the, the, the requirements uh, here are eight per thousand square feet. Um, I do think it's worth noting that's not that's not the requirement for every area of the city of Columbia. Um, Main Street, for example, is zero parking spaces. Uh, um, North Main, where we've done a number of restaurants, is, has a 20% reduction from that. Uh, the Vista as well. I mean, so the, the eight per thousand, al although a city, a current city requirement, um, <coughs> it, it's not necessarily a requirement that applies to all restaurants in in Columbia. And again, as we showed, we've got a parking study and I can hand that out to y'all as well. It's a spreadsheet showing there's not any other restaurant on Divine Street that has that amount of parking right now. Um, okay. Anybody else that has questions at this time? Looking thoughtful, or you? Yeah, I'm just yeah. sort of thinking out loud. I mean, would the restaurant be in agreement with some sort of condition being put on the possible approval of the variance stating that should you should you do well and should you continue to operate that we set up some sort of a um, condition that would require you to keep maybe not the 49 spaces but the 36 which would be what would be required anyway. I would advise against that. Um, zoning would not really have a mechanism for enforcement for that as a condition to a variance. We have a special exception 
for a leased parking, and that's our enforcement mm -hmm. mechanism for that off-site parking. So without that, and as part of a variance, that mechanism Understood. isn't there. Okay, so that was the other one. Okay. Now I want to make sure that, so, and Rachel helped me with this, so when we've had different applicants come before us that are, go pick one on Divine Street. Um, Tallulah. Tallulah, Henry's, Henry's, whomever, and they have to provide off-site parking. Was that part of a variance or did they have to get a special exception first and then come get a variance to is it rolled up in one that that's where i'm just still unclear and without those approval approvals in front of me i'm not sure um, that's something i can definitely check into but if done correctly it should have been required to get a special exception to enforce any off-site parking Okay. I think we can speak somewhat educated to Tallulah specifically, which is a larger rest. It's about 5,300 square feet versus 4,500. Uh, they have 15 on-site parking spaces. We have 18, and they received a variance uh, for parking as well. And they, did not, they do not provide any off-site parking at all. They don't have any um, parking lots. Was that something that the lights had prior to <coughs> Tallulah's, or was that? No, it was... Um, when they came in as a new restaurant because Diane's had been out for so long, they had to come back for a, a, a new variance. So right. um, they do provide um, valet parking there, but, but they don't have any additional parking lots. Again, we have more parking spaces than they do, and we're a smaller, smaller restaurant. Okay, anybody else from the board that would like to best applicant at this point? Um, at this point, um, you know, why don't we um, hear from the public, those who, um, if you haven't been, if you came in late and weren't sworn in, um, you need to be sworn in. Um, but let's open it up for discussion for those who are opposed. And Thank you. Thank for. you. <clears throat> Morning. I'm Morning. Bob Hallman, and I've lived in Shandon for... Uh, about 48 years, uh, live just around the corner on Capitol Place in the first block um, off of Divine Street. And if I might, as I start, if I could ask for five minutes, I'll try not to take it all. But I am representing a group of people, three who were here last time uh, on our block that cannot be here today, and we have two others here that uh, don't plan to speak. But if I might start out by saying that this just does not fit our neighborhood. It doesn't fit the neighborhood for lots of reasons, but dealing with the parking that you gentlemen are charged to decide, um, it really is smoke and mirrors here that they're asking to get a variance because they have this other parking in other places. They do not. The reason is that behind them where they say that they're going to have an agreement with that lot back there or with the doctor, the acupuncturist. He already has that agreement with Eggs Up, Arabesque, and Zaz. It says so on the sign. It is packed every day, every night, lunch. And down the street at Frank's and Cantina's, they flood the streets down there so much so that they've had to put a red light in there. It was not a red light for traffic. It was a red light to keep people from getting run over. Why? Because there's no parking back there on that little dead end part of Holly Street. They go across the street and flood those neighborhoods. I had one woman tell me, because I've been out meeting some neighbors that I had not met, and this one woman told me that I can't even have my friends over. She said, I've had tried to have friends over and have them tell me they had to park two blocks away just to come to my house. They park in front of my yard, and I just feel trapped in my own house. The lady behind Eggs Up was literally tearful when she talked about how it's affecting her. The gentleman that's right behind uh, Urban Cookhouse is here and talks about how it affects him. There's only three park, two parking spaces on that whole block on the street of Sims there. So I would urge you to, to start by recognizing there are six restaurants already. 
in a one and a quarter block up to Urban Cookout. They now want to put this bar and grill in there, squeeze it in there. It backs right up to the fence of Shandon. And I'm asking you to consider that we need to protect the neighborhood. This is one of the oldest, very interactive, um, very healthy feeling neighborhood. I used to joke that people come from Camden just to jog in Shandon. It's a, it's a fun neighborhood. But if we start eating away at the, age, at the edges, this is not a dense area. It is not other than that one card or Divine Street. And if we start eating into our neighborhood, degrading those properties, they go downhill, that's going to eat back into the neighborhood. So I urge you to consider that. I did a little man on the street parking analysis and I've given it to you gentlemen in an email that I wrote, but there are currently 46 minimum, based on your regulations, 46 spaces that are not provided for these restaurants. So these are the people that are going back into the neighborhood. Sunday morning, I talked with a gentleman that two blocks back on Sim Street, he said, my street's full on a Sunday morning. So it's not just in the evening. The, um, but I would urge you to look at my, where I broke it down by restaurant and, and what's, what's happening there. Um, the lot that was built behind the acupuncturist, which you can see is directly behind the blue square, it provides um, 37 spaces, but those spaces are already jammed full. There's no place there to say that Backstreet's is going to be able to use X number of spaces in there. Likewise, his neighbor, who I think he says is going to give him some spaces in that lot, that there's no guarantee that he's not gonna get fed up with broken beer bottles and stuff in his parking lot and say that, is that five minutes already? Oh, okay. Can I ask Thank a question? You. Can I ask a question? And, and, and you said you provided, I'm, I might be missing something, but is there, Mr. Hallman said that he had done a, not a traffic study, but, but is that somewhere? Okay. I would like to bring up something else. They said in, in their presentation, our track record speaks for itself. I say it does. I asked the Hickory Police Department to send me the police calls that have been made to their restaurant there. They said, we can only go back to 2004, and they sent them to me. They had 382 police <coughs> calls during that time frame. 60 of them was the alarm going off. I'm assuming in the middle of the night, you don't have a lot of attempted break-ins in the daytime. So we're just right across the fence from this. So here, once or twice a month, or, or once a month, you're gonna have police coming in there, you're gonna have a siren blaring in the middle of the night. They had 125 calls for DUIs, accidents, hit and run property damage, and another 200 that included fights, drunks, assaults, those kind of things. The building that's there, that's been there since 1967, is an office building, just like the office building. Next to it, and next to it, and next to it. That's what belongs there. I'll bet you there hadn't been one police call to that office building. They bought this building, the current owners bought it in August, and maybe the maximum use for it is to put a restaurant in. The maximum profit may be for the restaurant, but it's not the best thing for the neighborhood. The church is here directly across the street, probably less than 100 feet from their front door. I don't know it's down the road, but how do you get an ABC license when you're way too close uh, to a church? Um, I want to be sensitive to, to time. Um, I, I, I don't want to, but, but we just we need to be consistent in the hearing. And so, if you uh, let me give you another minute or so. But what I don't want to do is is, is I won't even take that. Um, I don't know whether it's it's um, procedural, but the applicant didn't sign the application, so the applicant didn't make. The applicant being Mr. Dorrit, he didn't sign the application, nor did he give an authorization that I'm aware of for somebody else to sign the application. So maybe that's a procedural bar for, for the matter even going forward. But I would urge you all to consider that this is a domino effect. We're down on the corner where Lasco's already currently is. 
It's another building just like this one. It'd be a perfect setup for another bar. So what do we do? Give them another variance because we gave this place a variance and then push more cars into the neighborhood. Um, this is a really enjoyable neighborhood. I'm not against drinking. I'm not against bars, but it just doesn't belong here. Please don't approve this variance. Thank you. Morning. I'll be very brief. Um, I'm Lynn Phillips. I live at 610 <clears throat> Capitol Place, which is in the first block. Um, mainly, I want to make the point, and I know it's just been made, but I want to remake it, that there are currently six restaurants in a block and a half. Six. Back streets will be seven restaurants in one and a half blocks that are already saturated with cars and saturated with people going across <coughs> Divine Street, pedestrians. I mean, if you, if you lived in that area, you will have had a situation where you went, oh my God, I almost hit that person because they're, you know, and you will, I will have also seen people who are a little tipsy going back and forth. So that's a serious problem. Our neighborhood, we are first one of the oldest streets in Shandon. I mean, we're a historic area. We have some of the oldest houses on Capitol Place in Sims. Um, there are reasons, as you know, I don't have to say, there are real reasons for having these regulations, um, wise reasons. Um, I was on Shandon Neighborhood Council years ago, and you know, we look to you all to help protect our neighborhoods. Um, and that was the case very frequently back then. I ask you to please help protect our neighborhoods now. Um, we depend on you. We depend on you to help with that and to not allow creep to occur in an area where it shouldn't occur. Um, I would hate to think this is a done deal. Uh, we are already suffering our quality of, of life in the neighborhood from the number, from the lack of parking and kinds of businesses um, and I'm real concerned about noise pollution you know what's to say there's no promise anywhere I couldn't hear the young lady I wish I had but I, I think oh it's okay it's not your fault it all goes straight up I couldn't hear the details of the regulations I wish I could have but I don't I can't fathom where there is any promise <clears throat> where there's any promise in these lease plans for spaces. You know, what's the promise that somebody doesn't sell Sadler real estate next door, move, et cetera? Um, I just don't see assurances on any of this kind of vague stuff that they're saying. Um, <clears throat> real concern, down at Henry's, they have bands outside sometimes. We can hear them at our house almost two blocks away. Um, Um, I don't. I would love to know what he's talking about. What Mr. I think it's Kaysen is saying about a church letter. We don't know anything about a church approving anything. So I'd like for y'all to ask them that question. Um, we have Lutheran Church represented here, and it certainly didn't come from them. So, um, how do we have any kind of reassurance, regulations written down that they don't choose to be open till two? Their only other example of a restaurant is open until two. Um, how, do, how do we have any idea that they don't decide a year in that a bar fits, you know, that they're getting bar traffic but not food <clears throat> traffic and they stay till two, which we know is already a problem. The parking plan, and the last thing I would say, uh, the parking plan is a very impermanent plan. We have no assurances of anything. We will have glut, that we already have glut, you know, of people and cars into our streets. Um, and I just ask that you please do what I've had the experience of y'all doing in, in my past with the Neighborhood Council is Please protect us. Please, you know, development is one thing, and I'm all for good development, but we ask that you protect the character and the peacefulness 
and the family-oriented nature of our streets. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> hey, good morning, gentlemen. I'm Keith Mueller. I live at 614 Sims Avenue. So I'm literally at the house that's right next to the acupuncturist uh, parking lot that everybody keeps talking about this morning. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to you today. Uh, Shannon's a great place to live. It's great because it still has the old town feel that you're speaking of, ma'am. You get to be near some cool businesses and walk to things and do things. So you accept a little bit of noise. However, what we're seeing already is that balance between business and residential, it's already out of whack. You've heard about the problems of parking all up and down Sims on Sunday mornings. I can tell you right now on the acupuncture slot, uh, every weekday night, it is full up, um, especially between probably 6 and 7.30, and I know this because when I look out my living room window, I can see it. Um, and so if a car alarm goes off, if any of those noise events happen, we're, we're very aware of what's going on in that parking lot. Get, um, are you in the stucco house that's... Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, kind of pink with the gas lamps out front. Yes, sir. That's us. Absolutely. Um, but that key word really is, is balance and maintaining the balance between the residential area and the business area. When Urban Cookhouse first opened, we saw the problem, the parking problems actually exacerbate pretty quick despite the number of spots they actually have. Now their business has leveled off a little so it's not quite as bad, but if you look at the police records, you'll see that just two weeks ago we uh, had somebody ticket in front of our house whose uh, bumper was hanging into our driveway, so to speak. So those problems still exist. And what we view is another restaurant, especially a restaurant with these parking challenges, will only increase those parking problems up and down Sims and even wrap around onto Blossom uh, that exists behind our house as well. Uh, most importantly, uh, what I'm scared of, which the previous speaker hit very well, is the precedent this sets. You know, we talk about places like Tallulah who already uh, exist in the average of 4.4 parking spaces, showing that we're already out of whack. And some places like Tallulah and Ola Giorgio have set up valley parking to try to alleviate that, so they do have some type of off-site parking. However, even with those uh, mitigation measures in place, they're not guaranteed, and they can still affect our, our quality of life in the area. Um, I guess, in the end, I, I think the rules that you guys have in place, they exist for a reason. They exist to maintain that balance, and I'd like to see that balance maintained. So. I'm with the other residents of Shannon. Uh, I ask that you please don't approve this uh, variance. Thank you. Uh, do you affirm that your testimony will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jim Daniel. Uh, I'm a big fan of Frank Kaysen. He and I have worked on several projects in the past. He does quality work very innovative uh, tenants, uh, but I'm here for a couple of reasons. One, uh, I, I, part of the concern that I see is they never quantified is the parking that they have gotten lined up just for after five, or is it from opening of the restaurant to the closing of the restaurant? They never said what time the bar would close. They said the restaurant would close at 11. Does the bar close at 11 or does it close at some later time? I think that needs to be clarified. There's a building two doors down from this location that's presently for sale. What if somebody decided they wanted to buy it and didn't do the same thing Mr. Kaysen's doing? Uh, they could have gone for a special exception which would have tied down many of these issues that the residents have raised but they decided not to. I'm really here because I'm president of one of the neighborhood associations that participated in the coalition of joint neighborhoods around Five Points in trying to deal with the bar issue in Five Points. The bar issue in Five Points did not start yesterday. I mean, you can look back, I've been in this town a long time. I can remember when there was a movie theater on Harden Street, it's now a bar. But if you look at is at least 13 to 17 establishments in Five Points that at one time were retail that are now a bar. They got a variance for parking over a period of time. And it, like these people say, it builds on top <coughs> of each other. So where do we draw the line? This is a very nice upscale restaurant. It's one that I would be happy taking my family to based on what has been presented. 
But the bigger issue that y'all have got to face is which is next? Is it the building two doors down the street that gets sold and they want to do this? Or whatever, but there are five, if this is passed, there are five restaurants in a quarter of a block. Eggs Up Grill is only open at breakfast, so you move that one off the table. But you do have, counting this one, four within what baseball throw. So uh, my big concern is there's no way to really define long-term parking. That would have been done through a special exception. Staff says that y'all can't grant exceptions. But there's always an exception to an exception. You know, my succession was, suggestion was, okay, for the lunch hour, you cut the needs in half. After five, you have the full needs. But, you, but the acupuncture people have already committed to other things. So how can you count that? Anyway, that's what I got to say. Thank you. Question. Jim. Jim, yes. question. Yes. Is part of the, the, the discomfort that, and I don't know that the applicant would be willing to do this, but is, is you know, what if there's a scenario where there are leases in place? You know, somebody raised a point earlier, um, you can't, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not making this assertion, but you can't, you know, in residential real estate, if, I, if I've got a property for sale with a lease um, with it, the sale does not nullify the lease. The lease runs with the property. Same as commercial. So if there's teeth in it where they're required through a lease um, to provide parking, that should be some of what ought to be teeth in it. Well, I don't think I, any, hang on, I don't, I don't think anybody questions Mr. Kaysen's integrity, and he might not want to do that, and, and, and he might not, you know, get the variance if, if that's a sticking point, if that's how it's proposed, but, but is that some of the discomfort is that, that, that there's, it's, it's too loosey-goosey as it's being presented? Do you, does your comfort level go up if you've got something recorded lease at the courthouse that, that, that says that, you know, that they've got, and then again, I, I, I don't see how somebody is gonna come before us and give us a lease if the spaces are already taken by other restaurants. I mean, I just, I've gotta believe that, that somebody's not gonna come and, and be fraudulent with, with something like that, particularly an applicant like this, as you say, who, we know a little bit about this track record um, coming in front of us, but does that make your comfort level go up at all if, if there's something that's enforceable about the parking? Well, I, I, I'm hearing what the neighbors are saying is that they're not comfortable with the situation as it is. He could have applied for a special exception, which would have required written leases, would have required some restrictions on the deed and some other things he decided not to. Uh, you know, one way to solve the problem perhaps might be getting a letter from each of the organizations specifying they have something in place for a certain period of time for a certain number of spaces. But the church has already changed ownership three times, I gather, in the last three or four or five years. So what's to say the next guy doesn't change it? The acupuncture place, these folks are saying, is already committed to uh, the ones across the street. Um, so you're back to the same scenario, but I think one way to solve it would be, yes, have something in writing confirming that these spaces are actually set aside for them, but then the bigger question, are they set aside just from 5 p.m. to the end of the day, or are they set aside all day long? I, I, I like uh, Urban Cookout, and I made it a point to go after the 1.30 rush, because the only time I've really gone, or two times I've gone at 12 o'clock, I ended up either parking across the street uh, I don't recall anything in the restaurant that says for off-site parking you can go ABC. How are they going to confirm that? So, uh, but I guess the answer, your short answer to your question is something in writing from the, the person who is granting that lease specifying that they have it for a certain period of time, I would think would at least be one step in that direction. But I don't think that would pass on to the next, to the next person who might end up with the property. But I thought she said a lease runs with the property. 
Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. The lease would run with the properties. I'm, I'm, you're right. Uh, unless there's something in the thing that says the lease gets, you know, a lot of times you'll put in a lease if the rights get terminated, if the property transfers. But that's how we protect the neighborhoods yeah. is by when people that's come right. and, and maybe it's the most restrictive. Right. And again, maybe the, the applicant won't go for it. But if it were a scenario where it was you had to have X number of spaces for your hours of operation and hours of operation is 11 to 11, meaning you open at 11 and you lock the whole thing down at 11. I'm just trying to figure out if there's a balance where... Anyway. That would seem to be the only resolution I could see for this particular situation. Right. But again, we look at five points as our template. Uh, are these folks going to continue to have to come before you people? Uh, and five points didn't get where it is. It took it 30 to 40 years to get there. Right, but I don't know that it's applicable to make five points the template for Divine Street. Why not pick the Vista? Why not pick what's going on on Main Street and the success that... There are parking garages in the Vista. There are parking garages in, in Main Street. There's there are no none in five garage. points. There's no parking garages here. Well, the city has bought two lots. Uh, but there are no garages. Yeah. But, you know, right. uh, but I think that's probably... You got to check with these people, but it would seem like to me that would be the logical situation. But it's not here today, right? Thank you. I, is there anyone else? I think what I'd like to do, if you don't mind, is to have. And I, I'm trying to take some notes myself, but okay. but if we could have everybody, and then you come up at the end and try to address, and and I'll try to be sensitive to give you time to respond to to what's being offered. I'm Teresa Boykin with Incarnation Lutheran Church, and um, we did provide a letter to the Zoning Council stating that we're opposed to any, um, any consideration for the variance. We are challenged with parking ourselves as a church. During the day, we operate a child development center from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. We also have a very active scout troop that is active on Monday and Tuesday nights. and. Uh, Parking is a challenge, it continues to be, and uh, we would appreciate consideration that um, yeah, we're opposed. I just want to make sure we're on record for that. Thank you. Thank you. If, if, if you could come up to the mic, please. We, we, we just have to have you on the record. Yeah. I just want to make a quick correction. I'm very grateful for Mr. Daniels' uh, comments, but I want to make a correction in that. There are currently six, not four or five. There are currently Zaz, Eggs Up, Arabesque, Cantina 76, Henry's, and Urban Cookhouse at present in a one and a half block area. Backstreet's Bar and Grill would make seven in a, in a one and a half area. So I just wanted to make that <coughs> number correct. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to um speak in support of or in opposition to this variance? Not, uh, I'm going to close testimony from the, from the public if there's no one else who'd like to speak and then let the applicant address the concerns that have been offered. Thank you. Um, to start with, I think Mr. Daniels um, brought up a, a good point in that a lot has changed in the last 40, 50 years, and, and one of those changes is uh, people are desiring to move downtown, and it's happening in droves. And um, and another thing that has changed is in 2015, restaurant sales surpassed grocery store sales for the first time in history. Um, that's a major shift, and the, and the younger population does want more restaurants. And there are a number of people here who are opposed to a, a restaurant, I, I want to clarify that I believe you all know, but a, a restaurant isn't approved isn't approved use already at this building. Um, so we we could do a restaurant here. It would just have to be um, half the size. So a restaurant is an approved use uh, for this for this site. Um, but we've seen a number of residents in the Shannon neighborhood also who are in support of this and who have said things to us like. We're so excited about the opportunity to have another option um, for our family to go to for a, for a meal. Um, 
a number of people have said that to us in a number of letters, I think, were provided to you all in the packet. So, uh, but a, a couple of just points of clarification based on some of the things that were, that were said. I, just something to note, the church across the street actually had a parking arrangement with, with this building uh, as well because they, they needed off-site parking as well. So there was an, there was an arrangement in place uh, for them to use this, this space as, as off-site parking too. So um, there's some precedent on the, on the other end there as well. Um, it should be noted too, there have been two restaurants that have closed recently on Divine Street too. So we are adding another restaurant um, and I recognize that, that it is in a pod that they're focusing on, but um, two restaurants, Divine Foods and Harper's have closed in, in rec recent um, history as well. Divine Foods being one that had almost no parking. Um, I'm not suggesting that that means that deserves a, a variance here, but that it, it should be noted they had <coughs> maybe four parking spaces that were split between uh, them and other restaurants. So that restaurant is closed and of course Harper's is closed as well. Um, uh, there was some inaccurate information shared, I'm not sure why. Uh, just to clarify, the acupuncturist lot is different than the lot that Eggs Up, Arabesque, and Zaz uses. Uh, they're two different owners. Um, the, they're absolutely correct that the lot that is, um, you, have a, you have a pointer? Do you have a pointer? It's, um, that is directly below us, that actually separates us from any uh, residences, is uh, not owned by us and it is not under agreement by us. Uh, that The lot that we have parking on is like four white cars uh, with a building on it, just to the back corner of our, of our lot. Um, so uh, we have met with them, we have an agreement with them, we have an email right here that says, that, that I can show you that we have nine uh, parking spaces from him. He has told us, and I, all we can do is go by um, his word and, and what he has signed with us, that he has no agreements with any other park, with any other restaurants, uh, not Urban Cookhouse or Eggs Up or Arabesque or Zaz. Um, that doesn't mean that people don't park there right now, but he, um, he does not have any arrangements in place. Um, and we also have uh, something from uh, Sadler that shows uh, that we have an agreement in place with him too. So. Just to, to to clear those uh, that misinformation uh, that was inaccurate. Um, there are. I'm gonna suspend the the time okay. parameter. Um, it was mentioned that there's like two parking spaces on the street here. We, we counted 12 um, uh, on street here between uh, us and I think about three four four buildings down. Um, someone mentioned Sunday morning parking in the, in the neighborhoods and. The, there are like three churches right around here too, so I, I, I don't know that that's fair to put that on the restaurant, all the restaurants over there, especially since only one is, is open in the mornings, and that's uh, Eggs Up. Eggs Up owner uh, has also, is in support of us. I think he's written a letter to us, to you all as well, um, and we've had extensive conversations with him. Um, and attached to that, the Divine Street Merchant Association, I believe you all received a letter from them. They are in support of this. Um, this concept and this variance request um, that we, we met with them and they've had a, they had a unanimous, unanimous support. Um, we met with the Shannon Neighborhood Association. They chose to not take a position on it. They didn't vote on it. We did, um, there was uh, some opposition and some for at that meeting, um, but they did not vote on it. Um, trying to think of a couple other things that were mentioned. Uh, The um, police complaints, I, they could, the owners are here and can certainly address that. I just, uh, Brian is here and if, he, if y'all want to hear from him, he, can, he, he just said the sheriff of Hickory told me if you've got any problems, tell me, just give me a call on my cell phone. So th there's, I'm not sure where that information came from. I have no idea the accuracy of it or what it is related to. They were both, they both had no idea what those incidents would, would have been. But, um, <laughs> And um, I think that was, I think it was that. The, the, the bar closing time, Mr. Daniels mentioned, uh, is the bar closing time different than the restaurant closing time? I, that's, there's, no, there's no difference. It's, uh, that's a hard stop for the bar and restaurant. So just wanted to clarify some of those. 
some of that inaccurate information. Anybody have any questions? Let me ask you, Frank, do you have a problem? Because I think it's a comfort level, and I don't think it's a comfort level with you or perhaps your, your um, you know, back streets, but um, I think that, that, that maybe a way to get everybody's comfort level up is to have some leases, you know, you can redact the part of the leases it would be, you know, made available to the public, but I think that the terms of them would go a long way in, I mean, this is how you do business in, in, in Columbia. And I can say some of this are reiterated in, in board discussion, but it's, it's just a tricky balance. I mean, the church, for what it's worth, years ago bought houses on Kirkwood with straw men and knocked houses down. Um, it happens. I mean, as the city grows, um, and I get the concern. I mean, I, I, I applaud um, the neighborhood groups. I applaud the Five Points crowd um, for, for trying to make things better. I don't think it's equitable to necessarily compare the divine, what I call the Divine Street Corridor. When I get out of town clients in the car and I'm, I'm selling Columbia because somebody's coming to, you know, maybe be a, a surgeon at Palmetto Health or maybe go to Raleigh or wherever, I mean, that's something that I, I try to sell along with five points in the vista is that Divine Street Corridor because it's a lot of mom and pop shops and frame shops. To me, it's what five points used to be. And I think what a lot of people want five points to get back to be, to, to be in. And so I understand the concerns of kind of the five points crowd, so to speak, creeping up Divine Street. But there's just a part of me where to strike that balance. I mean, are you opposed to to having leases that are in place that, that would hinge on this variance that's just something that I think gives a comfort level um, to the public. And I'll look to staff about, about, about how we would potentially hinge this, but, but. To clarify, are you suggesting it as a condition to the variance or are you suggesting separate special exception simultaneous to this variance? Because I think I'd be comfortable hinging this on this variance. I mean, I don't have a problem with... Zoning would have a very difficult time enforcing that in the future. Um, enforcing and I get that, but, but where I'm just... Rachel, where I'm hung up, so on Saluda, I can't remember, it was either a gelato shop or a coffee shop or something like that on Saluda where we do these kinds of things. And so where, where people have to go out and secure parking from other places and the thought that, that that's just never gonna be enforced or never has been, been enforced, it's just, I'm just wrestling with that. I, I don't understand why, and I know I've been on the board a long time, but between Mark Malott and Brian Cook, I mean, if it's not enforceable, then, then you see what I'm saying? I mean, then, then how do we, how, how do you enforce it with a special exception? Because that's written into our code with conditions. So that would give us grounds for violation, should it not happen. It has various conditions that have to be met, and it goes more specific. It requires specific, the parking has to be for this use only, hours have to be given, document has to be provided on a yearly basis to make sure there have been no changes. It just gives more enforcement and kind of more meat to that enforcement to have it to where we would have grounds for violation should it go away. There would be more grounds if so it came in under 17345 right. than if it came And that in. might be the way to go, but I, I just want to make sure that, that so Mr. is, is, is what I heard you say, it's not an option for us to, to hang specific? I would strongly advise it is, against it. It's an option. But, um, let, well, let, let me ask the question this way. Um, do we as a board put ourselves at risk by, because I know we put, accept, you know, we, we, we put um, certain parameters on 
experiences when, when we give them. So what I'm saying is, is I mean, if he, if he had to get a special exception first, then why are we here today? Why doesn't the city look at an applicant and say, you can't do that, you've got to have a special exception to move forward with that? So it leads me to believe, I mean, can we do that? The I mean, applicant was advised of that, that that was a strong option, right. but they but not a wish requirement. to pursue just the variance on its own. Right. Um, and a variance can be, I mean, the 50% variance could be approved. That is a condition you could give as a board if that is what you chose, but as staff, it'll be very hard for us to enforce that condition down the road. But that's, I, I just want to be clear because I don't want to set us up for failure, but that's an option, not a requirement. It's, it's an option. It's just not advised. Right. Okay. You want to say something? Well, just, we were, we were, we knew that there were, op there were two options, special exception versus variance. And we've done, we've done both. Uh, and, um, Wait a minute, you've done both. Not in, not in this case, I'm sorry. In other cases, we've done uh, special exceptions for off-site lease parking as well as variance. Well, that does beg parking. the question on, on this one, and I'm not saying you have to, but if, if staff strongly suggests that you get a special exception, why that, not? And to clarify, that was strongly suggested uh, um, after we had made the application. Right, but, so, but what I'm saying but, is, is that if, if staff is strongly suggesting that the special exception is the way to go. We've deferred it once. Just help me understand the reasoning behind moving forward with the variance and not yeah. taking it. it, and, it staff, and we, st we've discussed it. We've staff council is just that. It's, it's staff council, but 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 help me understand that thought process. Yeah. Um, I think that was somewhat uh, based on some of the immediate concerns they had heard from, from residents, and we totally understand. We felt like we had um, equal support for the project as well as presented. Um, so I, I think we're getting a, maybe a little bit off that, that everyone is opposed to this project uh, as submitted, uh, Mr. McMeekin. So I, I, I don't think that that is the case. In fact, we know that the Merchants Association, who is charged with um, protecting the Divine Street corridor uh, as well, is adamantly in favor of this this project so I, I don't want us to lose sight of that fact that, it, that this is not just um, uh, everyone's opposed to this project we, there are a, a few people who came today rarely do those who are strongly in favor come out and, and speak and speak for the project but um, but I know that you all have evidence that there are people who are in favor of the variance as presented um, it presents a, an additional layer of risk to be quite candidly because of all the details and requirements for the um, for the parking which is part of why we went over and above the requirement so special exception for off-site lease parking um, we, let me we, ask we would not have to do 49 well, spaces, well, let me ask but, you a question and, and maybe these are your words and maybe it's not applicable to this but if if you're willing to go over and beyond in that instance is it over and beyond to a point where it wouldn't be acceptable to have these these parking leases run with the lease of your tenant because that way there is something in teeth and uh, and I'm not we need to go into board discussion you know I, I, I don't I respect and hear staff about the special exception but but you know would you be opposed to going above and beyond and having leases that run with your lease with, with back streets. Um, you're saying have the lease term on every parking lot match the term of the lease. At, at this time, I don't think that's a, a risk that, we're, that we or they, and I'd have to discuss that with them because we have not talked about that, but um, that's probably not a risk that they're willing to take right now. Um, and we can. That's a, total, that's a complete change of a, of a, of a pretty big deal um, okay. that adds a lot of, of, of layers of risk. We have three parking lots, all of whom are charging us to park on their, on their lots. Um, so it's a pretty substantial amount of, um, of rent. Um, and and we, think, we think that all three add, add a, a beneficial layer, and we think we've already gone above and beyond in, in doing that, or attempted to go above and beyond in doing that. Um, 
you know, one of the, the church specifically uh, is intended to be specific to um, employees of the restaurant, for example, so that the, the ones in closer proximity could be used for patrons of the restaurant. So specific to that item, that's going to be a tough one. Yeah, and I just, I, I just don't know if that is a comfort level for anyone, but it just seems that... And, and I, don't, I don't know if that um, meets... I guess the concern the, that I've got, I guess, well. I, I guess the concern that I've got is, is, and maybe this goes back to the thought process of having to get a special exception with, with some more teeth in it, but... Yeah, and it's not a requirement yeah, of the special but, exception. But whether you, you, right, but whether you fail or succeed... parking ought to be consistent. It shouldn't just be in the first year. And that's, I, th I think I've got a little bit yeah. of, a, of a comfort level with that. I'm not opposed to what you're doing. I, I think it's a great thing. Um, you know, I, I, I just think it, it, it's just that ba striking that balance. I mean, you know, no offense to the gentleman, but if, if you just bought on Sims, you had to have known where you're buying. And you have to, to assume that there's, you know, I don't know that I'd call it risk, but 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 you're cognizant, or you should be cognizant of where you're buying. Um, anyway, are there any other questions for, from the board for the applicant? All right. Well, let's close testimony and go, go into board discussion. Thank you. Thank you. I think, I think you bring up some good points, Calhoun. I think that's sort of what I was referring to earlier, that it seems that the applicant stated and um, showing us that he potentially would have enough spaces, but um, I was trying to figure out some way that if we could tie them to that. I mean, if, if we knew we had the 36 spaces, then I would feel you know, comfortable with the variance of the <coughs> requirements because I feel like you know, we, we would have them. But, um, can't figure out a way to do that, then I, I think they may not have the parking required to get it done. Um, it'd be unfortunate because I live in the neighborhood as well, very close, just a couple of blocks from the site. Um, I would love to see them be able to open. Honestly, I'd love to go there myself, but um, if we can't figure out a way to provide the ample parking, I'm not sure we can do it. I'm, I'm also, um, I wish that more of the people that Frank stated were in favor of the project would have come and spoken to us. I know it's difficult to get them to come. You know, often you have the, seems like more often than not, the people who are opposed are the only ones who ever show up. Um, but I guess that's, that just, it is what it is. And I flipped through the letters and it appears to me, I haven't read them all, but the vast majority are opposed to the letters that we have. So um, I'm not sure. So this is a tough one. Well, I don't think it ought to be a popularity contest. I mean, you can have letter writing campaigns or people pack um, hearings. I think we've got to go on the, the, the merits of, of every case. And um, this is a tough one. I mean, I, I just don't know how you do business um, in five points or these different areas that don't have the parking garages or where parking is just a, a big conundrum. Um, it is dangerous. I mean, I, I forget when it was, but um, um, there was, I mean, someone is, you know, was run over at that, that intersection of where there are red lights. And um, I use Divine Street's business development. I mean, what I figured out is if I'm showing first time young buyers, I, I get them to meet me at Henry's um, for a beer after work, and it's, it's a problem crossing Divine Street, period. I've got a buddy who's got a law firm, so I never worry about it. I just tell him I'm parking in his lot at 5.30 or 6 o'clock. Um, but, but I think we've just got to strike a balance, and um, you know, sometimes I worry that, that we send the message that, that Columbia is just hard to do business with, and it's a great thing that, that this is somebody from another state um, that, that's willing to come and invest money and, and, um, and take a chance on Columbia. But I just... You know, 
And we see, we see a lot of this. This request is certainly not uncommon. I mean, it's, and it's and I don't mean, and, and Rachel, I'm, I'm not sitting in an apology, but, but it's not a, but, but I think the big thing to do is to protect the public. I think that is, is, is one of the things that we're charged with, but I, but I also think that we are here to help people try to do business. Um, and if there's a way to do that, you know, again, if, if the special exception was the path to do this, to get to the variance, then if it's an option and, and the, the applicant decides to do something different, but I think where I'm coming down is I'm for this, but, but I think that my motion would be, and, and let me just kind of, Frank, speak to y'all from, from, from up here, would be to require that those leases They've just got to be more than 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 a year, and and I don't know, you know, maybe it's too um, um, prohibitive to do them to run with the lease of that. I mean, I, I'm comfortable with the hours of operation. I'm comfortable with the liquor license and and all that comes with that. Um, I mean, really, what we're talking about doing is just, and it's not that we don't trust you, but but I just know that that people don't go into business to fail, and I know that some of them do, but to me it's just a cost of doing business um, to provide those leases. So I think you answered the question, but I want to make certain, um, and I think I hadn't heard from the two other members, but I think that Mr. Dinkins is, is thinking the way I am. I'm willing to, to, to propose a variance um, but it's got to have the teeth in it of, of recorded leases. And if you're not willing to do that, then, then I think you, you are going to have to come back with another bite at it um, or maybe another, another tenant. And I don't want you to have to do that, but, but at the same time, I mean, you know, I guess I am using your words. If you're going to go above and beyond to do something, in this corridor then then be willing to go above and beyond with all of it not just part of it so let, let, I, I just want to make certain so if we i'm asking the question if we were to hinge this variance on recorded lease park you know re recorded leases that are more than 12 months and then we can figure out what it might look like are you not willing to move forward can i can i get one of the restaurateurs uh, sure. to come in on this as well. And this is yeah. you know, difficult to do in, in, uh, when this has not been discussed much. But uh, this is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian has been in business for 23 years. So um, uh, one of the first, uh, I just want to give him a chance to speak. Actually, he well, hadn't had a chance to speak. But um, I, I opened the restaurant in 1996 when I was 26 years old. And I raised four children there. And we always had parking. Parking is an issue no matter where. I need the parking as bad as you need that, the variance to, to be successful. So it goes both ways. But there's so many good things about this restaurant. I can do it anywhere. I don't have to do it there. My son went to school here, graduated here, chose it. I'm going to spend the money to do it. So, but again, I, so, that, that's kind of a, yeah. a conflict with if you need the parking. We, then We all need it. He needs it. I need it. You need it. Yeah. We're That's giving you, I, I guess, but what I'm saying is, is if you've got a path to get the parking, then why wouldn't you sign on the dotted line, so to speak? I never said I wouldn't. I, I have to discuss it with him. This is all new to me. I'm in the restaurant business. Right. I, I, I think a, a, a non-specific way to answer that is we would be open, I'm sure, to a, 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 a amenable solution. Um, is it committing to seven years of, of, of parking leases? Probably not. Is it... We, we do have, uh, just to clarify, that we do have leases that are signed. Um, this might be um, semantics, but recording leases um, is not something that we would do for a parking lease. But uh, if you just mean showing proof that we have leases, um, we can, and to your point, can we cross out some of the pertinent, some, some of the information in there? Uh, we probably can do that. Um, We'd have to talk to our attorneys about it as well and discuss it between the two of us. But, um, um, but would we be open to a scenario like that? Yes, I mean, I hope, hopefully we're 
we've shown in the fact that we didn't just come and say we, we're, look, we're looking for a parking variance to reduce uh, 50 percent. Please give it to us. We, we came and said we've, we've secured three different off-site um, parking locations that, that do that have leases in place. Um, right, but we each of those but, are but you different. also understand, and again, I take you at your word, but but the leases have been provided to anyone. Yep, I do understand that. We can we, we have. So I think that's where again there there's this there's this uncomfortable feeling of. And I don't know, you know, what the pros and cons, and again, I'm, I'm not a lawyer of, of, of recording. I don't know that that's necessary, but um, I think what I'm getting at is, is I, th I think that there's a path for y'all to get this variance, and, not, and, 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 if, and if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. But, but I want to be clear is that, you know, again, I, I think that there's a way to, to mitigate some of the... Um, you're going to have people that, that, that don't want you there, period. You're going to have the NIMBYs. You're going to have the whatever. And again, I, I, those are my best customers now. And I don't and, and, and I don't get into the popularity contest of how many people can pack an, an, an audience or letter writing campaigns or stuff like that. But, but it's just that balance. And I just don't think that there's a comfort level with the board as I'm hearing it. I had, I've only heard from Mr. Dinkins, um, or the public, and I know that there are other people that support you. Yeah. Um, I, I, I so, do. these are two emails confirming that we have leases um, in place, and, then, and then this is an actual lease, and again, yeah, at the risk of sounding like we're, we're trying to hide something, our attorney has, has said, has advised us right now at this stage not to provide this until things are, um, are struck through us. Well, I'm not an attorney, but, but, but why? I'm not an attorney either. But, but he had to tell you why he didn't want it made public. There had to be some reason to, to, to say it's in your best interest not to release it because of A, B, and C. We had a, very, we had a relatively short conversation, and he said, I, I can't advise you to do that right now. Um, okay. So if, if we need to get to that point. Yeah. I, because, well, I mean, without, without restating the obvious, you know, I think the, the hang-up here is it appears that you possibly could have enough parking and if, if we could be given some assurance or some guarantee that it would be not just for the short term, that while, you know, for the duration of while the restaurant was there, that you could provide the amount of parking that you're, you know, stating that you have, then I think we would probably have comfort with this. But under these parameters, it's just difficult to, um, you know, obviously our concern is what happens if something changes in two years? You're still in business. And I realize you say you need the parking. That makes sense. But, you know, the where the neighbors are coming from is if you don't have the parking, will they go park on Blossom or Weed or yeah, wherever? And, so and, that, that's, that's the yeah. hang up. And you know? Obviously, we can have a lot of discussion about this, yeah. but there's a, there is a balance that, that yeah. we have a need for protection as well, right, for, mm -hmm. for the financial investments of this as well. We sign seven-year leases for three parking lots and don't need any of them, and, and we're, we're tied to it. Um, so maybe may, maybe the path, because again, I, I'd like to think that there's a path but, where you're open for business at whatever point. But you know, maybe the thing to do is is to defer it if you choose to do that. Again, I don't believe in popularity contests, but it would be nice. You know, I know that there are different people on Divine Street, be it well, I'll name people, Mary and Moses or, or, or whomever who have been in different capacities with or maybe other. He's on the, he's on the board that approved the or other association. Or, or, or other restaurant owners or, or maybe you can go back and, and go to the, you know, go to these neighborhood associations and just say, look, that this is what we're, they're just sitting at a comfort level. And again, I think that having some teeth in it um, maybe you go back for a special exception, but what Richard. I don't, but what I don't want to do is slam the door on you today by having a vote and denying Thank it. Thank you. Is there a requirement for a length of term on a on a lease for a special exception? It just has to come back for approval every year. So, but there's no specific length of time. It just gets reviewed every year when you renew your business license. Okay. And at that review point, Rachel, is there? Does the staff have the 
is that the teeth in it where you can say, they come and say, we don't need these spaces, and then, but do y'all have the ability to, to say, okay, you provided, you know, 30 spaces, now you only have to do 15, or do they have to come back for a reduction? I mean, what, where is the, the teeth in it? That is kind of the review period. It's also for us to make sure the lease stays in place. It actually gotcha. is in existence hasn't fallen through and hasn't substantially changed. So um, if numbers, and that is a point, if something happened in the future where you didn't need as many as you secured and you needed to revise the lease, you would come back just to amend the special exception, alter the special exception. Same if you needed to lease more. Well, let's, let's land the plane. Uh, unless you're opposed to this, I'd like to make a motion to defer um, this to next month's BOZA hearing. And again, I would just encourage you to, uh, I think what we're trying to do is to give you a path and there, there's no guarantee that you'll get there, but I just don't see that there's a comfort level on the board or with, with the public that's here today that, that, that we can give you what you're looking for, so. For a point of clarification, do, do, are we able to change it to a special exception request if we decide to do that you in between? You can do one simultaneous um, with your variance you would keep the variance because you're asking for the reduced on site and then if you were doing the special rest of what you needed it would be the separate site. special exception the special exception would be heard first but does that, that have to be posted and and, and if the, the time parameter does he have to be posted for another 30 days with this if he we would post the deadline for next month is technically tomorrow we can talk after the meeting I'd like to make a motion to defer this until um, next month's hearing. Is there a second? Yes, second. Motion seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. All right. The next item for discussion is item number eight. Case 2018-0018, it's 1723, 1725 Laurel Street. This is a special exception to establish a community garden use. I believe the applicant's here and they can come forward. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Actually, I uh, printed out my presentation for you guys if you don't mind. As you can see in the presentation packet, um, there's a mission statement for the garden that I started in 2015, just as a, a hobby. I started it at home and moved the raised beds um, over to Laurel Street, where it is now. Um, it's, been, it's been a pretty awesome time for me. I've uh, enjoyed the time working in the soil and growing produce for local neighbors on Laurel Street as well as a, a restaurant in the Vista as well, has used some of the produce from the garden in their cocktails and uh, out of their kitchen. Um, it's all gifted. I'm not selling any of this produce. I'm not uh, intending on creating a business out of this project. Um, it's more on the line to create uh, community outreach, the neighbors on Laurel Street, um, eventually developing for possibly the firefighters at the department across the street as well. I'm sure that everybody that's tried the produce agrees that it's delicious and I'm, I'm not creating anything more than a green space in the community on a property that's been grass since the two homes were tore down well over 50 years ago. If you look through the pictures, um, you see that uh, as you get towards past our Facebook page and you get towards page seven, um, six of the pictures, but page seven is a certificate <laughs> Um, of a treasure tree that the pictures just after it on page eight um, of the large tree in the back of the property as well. It's a very impressive large oak tree that uh, stands out as well and is definitely caught the eye of plenty of the neighbors. Um, I know that the property owners to the left and right of me uh, like the garden a lot as well and uh, 
would be here today, but uh, they're running their businesses right now and couldn't step away. The idea is just to keep building relationships and growing with the community and um, reaching out to local churches and uh, teen shelters to try and look at the possibility of helping people learn vocational skills and just creating a happy environment for Laurel Street. Thank you. Okay, is this existing? Is this an existing garden? Yes, sir. I've been uh, working in to till the land and whatnot. There are no permanent structures on the, on the garden, but uh, I've been growing vegetables and planting a couple trees here and there, nothing more than uh, just row crops and a few trees. No large farm equipment or anything like that goes on site. Uh, Rachel, why does he need a special exception? It's not a commercial use of the property. I mean, it's private use. You're not selling anything. The way that our code breaks it down is it's called generally general farm, primarily crop. That used to be the sole use on a parcel in that zoning district requires a special. Yeah, so it doesn't matter whether he's using it as selling commercially or not. I mean, if it was a, a neighbor that had a garden, they wouldn't be able to. The sales part doesn't really play in. No. Gotcha. Okay. I do have a, a photograph, well, it's more of a, a photograph of a drawing. I don't know if it was sent to y'all by email. I saw that. And is there any parking requirement for this? Okay. <laughs> okay. It's a small So he meets the minimal requirement. That's not an issue. Okay. So it doesn't sound like um, any of those are issues. Uh, let me see if anybody else is interested in saying something. We'll go through it. Yes, sir. Um, does anyone else here like to speak in favor or against this application? Okay, I don't, I don't see anyone here, um, and I'm, you know, I'm looking at your your application, and uh, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't sound like vehicular impact is going to have any impact on that or um, adverse uh, uh, lighting to the environment. Now, there is a uh, um, a note um, by staff that. You know that any um, you know fertilizer or anything like that would be stored in a containment so that it didn't create an odor um, uh, for the neighbors. I'm assuming that that's you're willing to to uh, abide by that. Yes, sir. Um, and that um, uh, you're not going to be um, uh, creating a, um, a a noise hazard um, there as yes, well. Sir. Um, and then, uh, I mean, the, you know, there is really no building. I mean, it's, I mean, I think the environment aspect of it is very nice. It's a green area. It won't have an impact on public safety, and um, it's uh, certainly um, uh, not a proliferation of these in the area. It's consistent with the underlying district and zoning application. I would say that's, um, that's true, um, and that location is compatible with permitted uses it looks like it does have you know i um, mean it's a safe area have, have a garden for sure um, and not a, an, an adversely impact the 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 public interest it sounds like it would be beneficial to the public interest to me so um, with that being said um i'd like to make a motion that um we approve uh this application um subject to the comments of staff uh, based on the, uh, the application, the written in, te in, in uh, public testimony of the applicant. Second. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Do we have a first and a second? Did somebody second that? Second. Okay, idea. second it. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Smash it carries. It's a lot easier than the other one. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies. Item number nine on the agenda, case 2018-0028. This is 3126 Two Notch Road. It is a special exception to establish an automotive service use. I do not believe the applicant is here. Okay. Did the applicant have to leave? Was he here? Who was the gentleman that had to leave that was sitting behind you? Do you know who that was? Rachel? I think they were on the 
I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. So I guess they're there to speak against it. Well, I tried to it. reach them or. Uh, you need to... Okay. So you here to speak on this uh, case? Against it. Okay. Would you speak? My, my name is Diane Wally. I know y'all know me. I'm the president of Belvedere. Right. We already have six auto places right there in that same block. Ooh. Two on the corner of uh, Wendover and Tunach Road. We got AutoZone. There was two right there on the corner of Wendover Road and across the street. And we got AutoZone, O'Reilly, and we have uh, Advance. Those aren't repair facilities, though. Those are retail stores, right? Huh? AutoZone and O'Reilly's, they're they just, they're, they're, yeah, they're but we got, parts. We got service to uh, two, right, the old Toyota place. There's three of them in there. Three of them right there. There used to be a used car lot there. Now it's two places that serve cars. And we have Phillips. And we got two down the street on the corner behind um, Two Knots and, and um, the dental place, one right, beh right behind there. And we got... Uh, What's the name? Uh, Rivers, Jimmy Rivers in the next block. And we got Martin in the next block. So that's enough. Okay. We, we're trying to get our neighborhood back together. I want to get up and ask that man to come to our uh, neighborhood and put a restaurant in. We got plenty of places that need restaurants, coffee shops, theaters, bowling alleys. And, and my thing is now, it's time to revitalize our area coming in Two Notch Road. It looked like a slum, y'all. And, you know, just like I said, I don't want to stop people from doing things that's right in our neighborhood, but we are homeowners. I've been there for 40 years, and all of these are my, you know, people that work and live in our neighborhood, and they, they are homeowners. And we're tired now, fighting the liquor stores, fighting the convenience stores, fighting these other places that's not right for our neighborhood. And, and we want our area to look like Five Points Vista and all those other places. We're tired of, we don't want it looking like uh, Decker Boulevard. It's, it's a mess down there. And I'm just like I said, I would love to have people come in our neighborhood that's gonna help. We don't even have a sit down restaurant. And that's, that's we don't even have a grocery store. You know, but if you, if you can, if, I'm asking the staff if they can come, these people come to us and ask us, what do we want? I wouldn't be like this. I got a home there. My insurance company has went, my, my insurance policy has went up because of the crime from these different areas. What this man was planning on doing, I just met him. Uh, did y'all, oh, excuse me for interrupting you, did y'all meet with uh, this gentleman? I met him when he was starting to work on the building before uh -huh. it got burned. It's the same man. <clears throat> Rachel, are we allowed to? Can, can I pass this out, out unless you see it? Yeah. He offered me money. He offered me money a, to go along with it. And I'm not for sale, like I said. With the, with the, uh, <clears throat> with the, uh, Are we are we able to vote on this or what do we? I mean, uh, this is a, I mean, that is your choice. Um, I believe we're here in the to speak. The applicant had another case that was deferred today to next month. The only thing I can think of on behalf of the applicant is maybe he got confused and thought both. That deferred. So this would be deferred. To, is that, the, uh, is that you know, the convenience store? The convenience store was the same applicant, and that one was deferred to next month. Right. Ma'am, can you come back behind the podium? Yeah. They can they can bring that to us. But he, he already has businesses and they just passed a law where they can't help but three. 
businesses. He, he got one on, on North Main and Fair Road. And he was talking about churches. These businesses shouldn't be going across, right across the street from the church. St. John is right across the street. And they want to go to seven days selling alcohol. And this is what he's trying to do, put this little business clank thing that he's going to do a, a service, and then he'll turn it into a convenience store. That's what they've been doing in our neighborhood for, for years. And it's time to stop. I'm really confused Excellent. with the, all these plans. They have, they have kitchens and they have... It is a multiple suite. It's multiple suites within the building. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be... He gave us the same plans for both of his applications. The mm -hmm. convenience store is on one side. That one is deferred today. And then there is the tire service shop that is going in there as well, which is what this application is for, is for the tire service installation. Well, I, and, and I, I clearly believe that you are correct in your assumption that he must have thought that both of these things were, were deferred. To give him the benefit of the doubt. That and I hate, to, I hate to, to just do this without him being here. And I really hate that all these people have come here and listened to all of this. Um, and I feel terrible that that, that happened. But I just, I just feel like, um, you know, I don't think that this necessarily means the applicant's not interested. I think he just was mistaken and he thought, thought that all this was deferred and that, that um, he didn't have this other item to, to deal with today. He was out there this morning. He was out at the building this morning. Right. What? Um, for it? And another thing, too, I want to ask a question. When they come in to do services as far as getting buildings, do they come in and start working on it before they come and insult the uh, neighborhoods? You know, these people be coming in working and they assume that we're going to agree with what's going on. We're trying to get our neighborhood back together, you know, and Two Notch Road is looking like a slum. Quite a few places y'all have gave business license to the people come back and do strip joints. I don't, I don't told the police there's two of them already. They're operating with strip license I'm without us. Uh, what you come? Well, ma'am, ma'am. Okay. I understand that, not, but we're not, we're not talking about, yeah. this is a tire service center yeah, that we're well, talking about. We got enough tire services that's, too. That's, that's, that's a, a lot problem. of them on there. I can't. Hey, you want to make a motion to divert, to defer it, if I, we can? A second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. I, can I have my paper? Motion please? carries. Thank you. And just remember these people was here for this meeting the next time. Because, you know, our time is valuable too. Yes, ma'am. We have one more lady want to talk. We defer it. Oh, you, you don't need to? Okay. Y'all remove it. Is that everything? No other business. So you know. I make a motion that uh, we um, conclude this meeting. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Meet the cash.